And with the ultra racing, you are quite good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, before we get there, I, I, I am curious. So someone looking from the, uh, you are from the outside, you, you can see that you do many things. And I'm wondering if you have a method uh, of learning. So let's say that, okay, so you, you want to do research in this new area. So for, for instance, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. I mean, you've done research in like mRNA and, and quantum mechanics and things like this. So like, mm -hmm. Let's say you want to do research with like mRNA, for instance, but mm -hmm. you know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. What's your method of, of jumping? Yeah. Like, like, what do you do? Like, what's your thought process? Yeah, yeah. No, so I have actually a method, which uh, I found out later on. Apparently, people at the National Science Foundation agree with this. Uh, there used to be a TV show in the 90s, which, again, is probably before your guys' time. It was called The Magic School Bus, uh, but maybe it's even still on, on television. And basically what it features is a school teacher, Mrs. Frizzle, who takes kids in a school bus that can go and like shrink itself to atomic dimensions and then you could see what's going on with oh. atoms or fly out into the universe and you could see what's going on with neutron stars and you know, whatever. Yeah. And so they would have an adventure like that every week. So it was kind of like a science motivated but, kids. No, it wasn't science, it was science, not science fiction. It was all right, science, right. right? Except for the sh school bus yeah, yeah, shrinking. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of it was all focused on science. And, and she would tell the kids in pretty much every episode, you know, just make mistakes, right? And that actually is the, the key. So you need to just make mistakes and you need to be patient. And so in fact, I did research on, we do actually research on messenger RNA and on, on, on RNA in general. And I didn't know RNA from a hole in the ground uh, as a, uh, even a fairly advanced faculty member already in the like early 2000s, right? I had been at the university already for like eight years or something like that. But I read some papers that looked very interesting to me, and I met up with some people at conferences that were RNA experts and knew what they were talking about. And so then eventually I came up with like a, an experiment that we could try, and we did that and it didn't work and it was like garbage. But, but then we, you know, I figured out other experiments, right? Ideas are a dime a dozen, right? You can easily come up with, you know, uh, with more experiments. And then I figured out something that actually was interesting and worked, and I did a collaboration initially with an expert at Penn State University, Phil Bevilacqua, who knew a lot more about RNA. Uh, and, and we were patient, so that's the key. So we, if you get into something new, probably a lot of the stuff you're gonna do is not gonna be right. Actually, even if you, <laughs> often even for the old stuff, right? I mean, as a scientist, you kind of try stuff out and not every, most of the stuff doesn't work. Um, and then you just have to be patient rather than like, oh my God, the grant is running out in, in a year and I need to publish seven papers or else, whatever. So I never had that attitude. I always managed to turn that off. And that's hard for people to do. And so if something would take uh, several years before we even could get something, a reasonable first result, I would take that time. Uh, like we published some uh, paper uh, a year ago um, that took me since 1996 to get there, right? So that's wow. like 2021, 1996, so that's like uh, you know, 25 you know, years, right? Uh, to really get to that dream that I thought I could do in, in 1996, I thought it would take me like a couple of <laughs> years, but it took more recently. Because it tried to like do, put all the bad things together, like super resolution at the sub nanometer level and time resolution at the femtosecond level and single molecules, like yeah. everything in one uh, experiment. Uh, and we finally did get it to work eventually, but there were literally five generations of graduate students over 25 years that worked on this, and they all did other, they, they did things, right? They got theses and published right. good stuff and so forth. But to get to that end goal, it took like 25 years. And if I had had the attitude of, oh my God, I need to do something for a, a grant, you know, uh, let, let's solve some problem of energy storage or whatever, whatever the hot thing of the day is, um, I wouldn't have gotten any of these things done. So I never had that. Uh, at that attitude, um, so patience, and and that means a little bit of courage because, you know, you can only afford patience if you have that courage because there's always demands, right? You need to publish, you need to get grant money, and da da da. And if you don't get something done, then you know the chances of that happening go down, and so you have to be willing to take those chances. But I've always found that you know, taking those chances was worth it. So you're going to make lots of mistakes. It's going to take time to figure out what you are really doing. And that just requires the patience until you, and you usually know. So in all of these things, I woke up at some point, some morning, and went like, it's clicked. Now I understand how we're going to model that RNA problem. And from now on, I think I actually know what's going on here and how, how to do this. And, and so you typically tend to know when you have that eureka moment. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think that's true of every, like when I was coding, you know, 
I usually knew like, okay, I'm on the right track sure. here now, and, and this is how I'm going to structure that program to do the thing that I want. So you usually have that moment, and when you know, you know, uh, and, and, and then that's it, you don't need to be patient anymore, but up to that point, you're going to make lots of mistakes and you need to be patient. Well, when you know, you know, and I think that, that patience is it's, it's a virtue, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, for some reason, like maybe it's the sign of the times that uh, everyone, it's like you said earlier, everyone's just in a hurry and, and there's this lack of uh, experimentation, lack of like, like this fear of making mistakes mm -hmm. and everyone just like trying to be perfect, trying to do all the right things to be, have the right life. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Especially something we see as you know, undergrads. Mm -hmm. um, 